Srimanta Sankardev R. Mantank R. Dev, 1449–1568 Assamese, Mahaparausa Sremanta Sankardera translate. Mohapurik Srimanto Zankordu was a 15th–16th century Assamese polymath, a saint scholar, poet, playwright, social religious reformer and a figure of importance in the cultural and religious history of Assam, India. He is widely credited with building on past cultural relics and devising new forms of music Borgit, theatrical performance Ankhya Naat, Bayona, dance Satria, literary language Brajavali. Besides, he has left an extensive literary oeuvre of trans-created scriptures Bhagavad of Sankardev, poetry and theological works written in Sanskrit, Assamese and Brajavali. The Bhagavadic religious movement he started, Ikasarana Dharma and also called Neo-Vaishnavite movement, influenced two medieval kingdoms, Koch and the Ahom kingdoms, and the assembly of devotees he initiated evolved into satras over time, which continue to be important socio-religious institutions in Assam and to a lesser extent in North Bengal. Sankardev inspired the Bhakti movement in Assam just as Guru Nanak, Ramananda, Kabir, Basava, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu inspired it elsewhere in the Indian subcontinent. His influence spread even to some kingdoms as the Matak kingdom founded by Bharat Singha, and consolidated by Sarbanda Singha in the latter 18th century endorsed his teachings. His literary and artistic contributions are living traditions in Assam today. The religion he preached is practiced by a large population, and satras monasteries that he and his followers established continue to flourish and sustain his legacy. Biography After the death of Sankardev, Madhavdev incorporated narrations of his life in prayer services, a practice that was followed by his apostles, and in due course of time a large body of biographical literature arose. These are generally classed in two groups, early those by Daichari Thakur, Busan Dwiya, Ramananda Dwiya and Vaikuntha Dwiya and late Guravarnana by Aniruddha Das, the more than one anonymous Katha Guru Karats, Bardawa Karat, Sankardev Karitra from Barpada, the Saru Svarga Kanda and Bar Svarga Kanda by Sarvabhama. The authorship of the biography credited to Ramkaran Thakur, Daichari Thakur's father, is doubted and it is generally dated to the 17th century and classed with the late biographies. In general, all biographies consider Sankardev as an incarnation of Vishnu, including that by Daichari Thakur, the earliest. The late biographies differ from the early group on the count that they ascribe supernatural feats to Sankardev, and describe miraculous events, and there is a tendency to read some events of the Bhagavata into his life. The biographies are full of contradictions, even though the earlier ones are considered more accurate, not all they claim are true. Daichari Thakur's biography, the earliest one, claims Sankardev met with Chaitanya, which is now not accepted to be true. <laughs> Early life, Bordawa, Patadroa Sankardev, then named Sankaravara, was born into the Shiramani chief Baro Buyan's family at Bordawa in present-day Nagan district in C1449. Though some authors have expressed doubt that Sankardev could have lived that long, considering that he was of robust health 1449 is generally accepted. The Baro Buyans were independent landlords in Assam, and Sankardev belonged to the chaos the Hindu caste. His family members, including parents Kusumvar Buyan and Satyasandhya Devi, were saktas. Sankardev lost his father to smallpox when he was about seven years old, and his mother died either soon after his birth, or soon after his father's death, and he was raised by his grandmother Kersuti. He began attending Mahendra Kandali's Tal or Chatrasal school at the age of twelve and soon wrote his first verses Karatala Kamala. The complete poem was written before he was taught the vowels except, of course, the first one, and is often cited as an example of the early flowering of his poetic genius. He stayed at the Tal during his teens, and studied grammar and Indian scriptures. He practiced yoga which is gave up later and was physically very able, and according to legend, he could swim across the Brahmaputra while it was in spate. It is generally believed that he wrote his first work, Harishchandra Upakyan, while at the Tal. Mahendra Kandali changed his name to Sankdardev while he was at school. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Buyan Shiromanship. 
Sankardev soon mastered the major scriptures of Sanatana Dharma and thereafter left the Tal in his late teens C1465 to attend to his responsibilities as the Shiromani Buyan. He came to be known as the Dekajiri among his subjects and admirers. He married his first wife Suryavati when he was in his early twenties and a daughter, Manu, was born in about three years, but his wife died about nine months later. First pilgrimage It is possible that the death of his wife increased his already existing spiritual inclination and he left for a twelve-year-long pilgrimage, sometime after his daughter was married to Hari, a Buyan scion. He handed over the maintenance of his household to his son-in-law Hari, the Buyan Shiromanship to his grand-uncles Jayanta and Madhav, and began his journey in 1481. He was accompanied by 17 others including his friend and associate Ramaram and his teacher Mahendra Kandali. At this point of time, he was 32. The pilgrimage took him to Puri, Mathura, Dwaraka, Vrindavan, Gaya, Ramaswaram, Ayodhya, Siddhakunda and almost all the other major seats of the Vaishnavite religion in India. He seemed to have spent many years at Jagannath Kshetra at Puri, where he read and explained the Brahma Purana to the priests and lay people. At Bhadrikashram in 1488, he composed his first Borgit Manamari Ram Karanahi Lagu in Brajavali. According to Katha Gurucharit, the first Borgit was Rama Mary Ridaya Pankaj Bays, and he composed it in 1481 at the very outset of the pilgrimage at a place called Romari. He returned home to Alipuhori after twelve years, his family had moved back from Bordawa in his absence. During his pilgrimage, he became the part of a pan-Indian bhakti movement and helped it blossom. <laughs> Shiromanishap refusal On his return from his pilgrimage C1493, Sankardev refused to take back the Shiromanishap, though on the insistence of his elders, he took responsibility of a hundred families Gomastha, but he soon handed over the responsibility to his son in law Hari. On his grandmother's insistence, he married Kalindi at the age of 54. Finally, he moved back to Bordawa and constructed a temple Devagriya in C1498, possibly a thatched house, built on the original site of his father's house where he could meet with people, discuss religious matters and hold prayers, and preach. He wrote Bhakti Pradipa and Rukmani Harana. Soon after, he received a copy of the Bhagavata Purana from Jagadisa Mishra of Mathila, with Sridhara Swami's monistic commentary. Bhavartha Dipika. Mishra recited and explained the entire Bhagavata in the presence of Sankardev, and this event is considered momentous in the development of Ekasarana. Datyari, an early biographer of Sankardev, writes Sankardev listened with rapt attention to the exposition by Jagadish Mishra and realized that the Bhagavata was a scripture without parallel, a scripture that determined Krishna as the only God, Nam as the real Dharma, and Ikonika Sarana and Sat Sangha as the indispensable elements of the faith. He also began composing the Kirtana Gosha. Sina Yatra After his exposure to the detailed Bhagavata Purana and Sridhara Swami's commentary Bhavartha Dipika, Sankardev produced a dance drama called Sina Yatra, for which he painted the Sapta Vaikuntha seven heavens, guided the making of musical instruments and played the instruments himself. According to other biographers, Sankardev produced Maha Nada in the presence of Jagdish Mishra in the temple he had constructed at Bordawa. According to Neog, this was the point when Sankardev decided to preach a new religion. Some of the first to be initiated into this religion was the wife of Jayanta Dali, a leper named Hariram, later Tulasaram, Ramaram his associate and Mahendra Kandali, his tall teacher. The thirteen years at Alipuhori was the period during which he reflected deeply on Vaishnavism and on the form that would best suit the spiritual and ethical needs of the people. Ananta Kandali, a profound scholar of Sanskrit, became his disciple during this time. He translated the later part of Kanto X of the Bhagavata Purana after consulting Sankardev. Some authors claim that this then had all the major features of a satra central kurting har, kari hati etc., whereas many others assert that these features did not exist during Sankardev's time. This then was abandoned and more than a hundred years later in the middle of the 17th century, Sankardev's granddaughter-in-law, Kanaklata, established it again. Srimanta Shankardev has written in the Bhagavat 
and Uttara Kanda Ramayana, laudation of Bordawa, Batardawa Nagon district about his native village which is 100% and absolutely true information of his birthplace i.e. Bordawa, Batardawa. However, some people claim that the birthplace of Shankardev is Patakibori Alapuhori Moragon district which is not true and misleading, ref. Shri Srimanta Shankardev Parama Guru Janar Janmasthanar Bainoni, a collection of true history of the birthplace of Shri Srimanta Shankardev, written by Shri Dipak Hoikia. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Literary works in the Baro Buyan territories. Non Bhagavata group, Harishkandra Upakhyana. Bhakti Pradip Kirtan Gosa Yurisa Varnana Non Bhagavata mixed with Bhagavata elements, not influenced by Sridhara Swami Rukmani Harana Kavya Lyrics Borgit Bhagavata Tales, not from Book X Ajamilapakian Book V AMRTA Manthan Book Eight Kirtan Gosa Ajamilapakian, Pralada Karitra, Harmahana Sections E V. Topic A H O M Kingdom. Topic Gang Mao. Viswa Singha began his activities to remove the Buyans from power in the western part of the Brahmaputra Valley in 1509. Furthermore, the Buyans in the Bordawa area picked up a quarrel with their Kachari neighbors, and when attacked Sankardev advised the Buyans to move, which brought to an end the independence of this group of Buyans. Sankardev and his associates first crossed the Brahmaputra River in 1516–17 and settled first at Singari and finally at Ruta, and when Viswasinga advanced towards Ruta, Sankardev moved to Gangmao in the Ahom kingdom. At Gangmao they stayed for five years where Sankardev's eldest son Ramananda was born. At Gangmao, he wrote the drama Patniprasad. In fact he lived alone at a place named Gajalasuti out of dissatisfaction with some relative. He penned the play there. <laughs> Duahat While at Gangmao, the Koch king Viswa Singha attacked the Ahams. The Buyans fought for the Ahams and the Kok king was defeated. Due to the unsettled situation at Gangmao Sankardev next moved to Duahat, near Ahatgari in present-day Majuli, washed away by the Brahmaputra in 1913. The Buyans were settled here by the Ahams with land and estate. Hari, Sankardev's son-in-law became a Hoikia, and his cousin Jagatananda, grandson of Jayanta received a title Ramurai. At Duahat, he met his spiritual successor Madhavdev. Madhavdev, a Sakta, got into a religious altercation with his brother in law Ramadas, who had recently converted to Vaishnavism. Ramadas took him to Sankardev, who, after a long debate, convinced him of the power and the efficacy of Ekasarana. The acquisition of Madhavdev, with his talent in poetry, singing, and dedication to his newfound religion and guru, was a significant event in the Ekasarana history. At Duahat, he managed to attract a wider attention and popularity, and he initiated many others into his religion. The popularity of Ekasarana and the conversion of people alarmed the priestly Brahmins, who reacted with anger and hostility. Sankardev tried to defuse their hostility by meeting with them at the house of his relative Buddha Khan and asking his Brahmin antagonists to install a wooden idol of Jagannath, called Maidan Mohan, at his religious seat. Sankardev left this idol hanging on a tree when he took flight from Duahat, and it was rescued years later by Vamshigopaldev and installed at Dabarapar Satra. The Brahmins finally complained to the Ahom king, Suhungmung who summoned Sankardev to his court for a debate with them. Sankardev was able to convince the king that he was not a religious rebel and a threat to the social order, and the charges against him were dropped. The hostility, nevertheless, continued. <laughs> Flight from Duahat Though the positions of the Buyans in the Ahom kingdom began comfortably with Sankardev's son in law, Hari, becoming a Paik officer and Ramrai, his cousin, becoming a royal official the relationship gradually deteriorated. After the death of Viswasinga, who was inimical to the Buyans, and the rise of Naranarayan, the Koch Buyan relationship improved somewhat. 
Sometime in the 1540s during the reign of Suklenmung a royal officer visited the region for an elephant capturing expedition. Hari did not make himself available and furthermore, an elephant escaped through a barrier managed by the Buyans. The officer took grave offence in this dereliction of duty and arrested Hari as well as Madhavdev. At Gargan, Hari was executed and Madhavdev interned for about a year. According to Daichari, taking advantage of the Koch advance against the Ahams 1546 Sankardev and his followers escaped from the Ahom kingdom as they fell behind the vanguard of the Koch army setting up their garrison in Narayanpur further to the east. <laughs> <laughs> Literary works in the Ahom kingdom Arguments against those antagonistic to Bhakti Kirtan Gosa, Pasanda Mardana, Namaparada. Vipra, Patni Prasad, Ankhya Naat. Tales from Krishna's Early Life. Kirtan Gosa, Sisu Lila, Rasa Krita, Kamsavada, Gopi Uddhava Samvada, Kujir Vansha Purana, Akrurar Vansha Purana. Borgites. Topic: <laughs> Koch Kingdom. Sunpura Sankardev and his followers reached Kapalabari in the Koch kingdom in the later part of 1540 where Madhavdev's mother Munora Ma and some others died, and the group soon moved to Sunpura in 1541. At Sunpura Sankardev initiated Bhavananda and Narayana Das later Thakur Atta. After a great deal of moving, Sankardev settled at Patbausi near Barpada in the Koch kingdom and constructed a Kirting Har house of prayer. Some of the people he initiated here are Chakrapani Dwiya and Sarvabham Bhattacharya, Brahmins, Govinda, Agaro, Jayaram, Abhutiya, Madai, Ajainsha, Jatiram, an ascetic, and Marari, a Koch. Damodardev, a Brahmin, was initiated by Sankardev. Damodardev was entrusted by Sankardev to initiate Brahmin disciples. A satra was also constructed for him at Padbausi itself. Later Damodardev became the founder of the Brahma Sangati sect of Sankardev's religion. Among Sankardev's literary works, he completed his rendering of the Bhagavata Purana and wrote other independent works. He continued composing the Kirtan Gosha, further translated the first canto of the Ramayana Adi Kanda and instructed Madhavdev to translate the last canto Uttara Kanda, portions that were left undone by the 14th century poet Madhav Kandali. He wrote four plays, Rukmini Harana, Parijata Harana, Kalagopala and Kalitamana. Another play written at Padbausi, Kanza Vada, is lost. At Padbausi, he had lent his bargeets numbering around 240 to Kamala Gayan. But unfortunately, Gayan's house was gutted and most of the Borgites were lost. Since that incident Sankardev stopped composing Borgites. Of the 240, 34 remain today. <laughs> Second pilgrimage Sankardev once again left for a pilgrimage in 1550 with a large party of 117 disciples that included Madhavdev, Ramarai, Ramaram, Thakur Atta and others. Thakur Atta had to return after just one day's journey. Madhavdev had to take entire responsibility of logistics. He on the request of Sankardev's wife Kalindi urged him to return from Puri and not proceed to Vrindavana. Sankardev and the group returned to Padbausi within six months in 1551. Koch capital and Bailadanga On receiving repeated complaints that Sankardev was corrupting the minds of the people by spreading a new religion Nara Narayan, the Koch king, ordered Sankardev's arrest, and Sankardev went into hiding. Chilarai, the general of the Koch army, half-brother of the king and married to Kamalapriya the daughter of Sankardev's cousin Ramarai, then convinced the king to give Sankardev a hearing instead, for the audience with Nara Narayan. As he moved up the steps to the court, Sankardev sang his Sanskrit Totaka hymn, composed extempore, to Lord Krishna Madhu Dhanava Dharana Deva Varam. And as he sat down, he sang a Borgit, Narayana Kahi Bhakati Karutara, playing on the name of the king. 
At the debate with the court pundits that followed, Sankardev was able to refute all allegations against him. The king declared him free and furthermore honored him with a seat close to the throne. Sankardev began to attend Narayana's court regularly, and received the freedom to propagate his teachings. Chilarai was instrumental in keeping Sankardev safe and supporting his work. Many of Sankardev's literary and dramatic works were completed in his domain with his patronage and protection. Sankardev acknowledged his appreciation in his play Ram Vijaya. Sankardev shuttled between Kokbehar the capital and Padbausi his seat. He was often hosted by Chilarai, and on his request agreed to have the images of the childhood days of Krishna at Vrindavan woven on cloth. He engaged the weavers of Tantikuchi, near Barpada, to weave a 40-yard-long tapestry panel. Sankaradeva provided the designs to be woven, chose the various colors of thread to be used, and supervised the weaving. It took about a year to complete and, deriving its name from its theme, came to be known as the Vrindavani Vastra. It was presented to Chilarai and Naranarayan. A section of this cloth is preserved now in the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. Chanse, a Muslim tailor serving the Koch king became a disciple of Sankardev at Kokbehar. When Sankardev returned to Padbausi some time later, Chanse too came with the saint. Sankardev frequented the capital for more than 20 years and enjoyed unstinted royal patronage for the first time. End. He made arrangements with Madhavdev and Thakur Atta and gave them various instructions at Padbausi and left the place for the last time. He set up his home at Beladanga in Kokbehar. During his stay at Kokbehar, Maharaja Naranarayana expressed his wish to be initiated. Sankardev was reluctant to convert a king and declined to do so, according to one of the biographers Ramcharan Thakur a painful boil, a Visha Fahara, had appeared in some part of his body and this led to the passing away of the saint, thus, in 1568, after leading a most eventful life dedicated to enlightening humanity, the Mahapurusha breathed his last, after four months of his last stay at Beladanga at the remarkable age of 120 years. Topic. Literary works in the Koch kingdom Bhagavata Tales, not from Book X Bali Chalana Book 8. Anadi Patana Book 3, Vimana Purana Bhagavata Tales from Books X, 11, 13 Kirtan Gosa Jarasandha Yuda, Kalayavana Bada, Muchakunda Studi, Sayamanta Haran, Naradar Krishna Darsan, Vipra Putra Anayana, Devakir Putra Anayana, Veda Studi, Lilamala, Rukmanir Prem Kala, Brigu Pariksha, Sri Krishnar Vaikuntha Prayana, Chitarvimzati Avatar Varnana, Tatpariya Gunamala Section I Renderings of Bhagavata Purana Bhagavata X Adi. Bhagavata 11 with material from books I and 3 Bhagavata 12 Bhagavata I Bhagavata 2 Bhagavata X lost Kurukshetra book X Uttararda Nimi Nava Siddha Samvada from Ramayana Ramayana Uttara Kanda lyrics Borgites Totaya Bhatima doctrinal treatise Bhakti Ratnakar Drama Ankhya Naat Kali Daman Kelly Gopal Rukmini Haran Parijat Haran Ram Vijay Visual Art Vrindavani Vastra Parts of this work are preserved in London. E Kasarana Sankardev used the form of Krishna to preach devotion to a single god Sarana, who can be worshipped solely by uttering his various names Nam. In contrast to other bhakti forms, Eka Sarana follows the Dasya attitude a slave to god. Moreover, unlike the Gaudiya Vaishnavism of Bengal, Radha is not worshipped along with Krishna. In uttering the name of god, Hari, Rama, Narayana and Krishna are most often used. Sankardev's famous debate with Madhavdev, who was a staunch Sakta devotee of Shakti earlier, and Madhavdev's subsequent conversion to Vaishnavism, is often cited as the single most epic-making event in the history of the Neo-Vaishnavite movement in Assam. Madhavdev, an equally multi-talented person, became his most celebrated disciple. 
Srimanta Sankardev started a system of initiation sarana into his religion. He caused a huge social revolution by fighting against anti-social elements like casteism prevailing at that time. He initiated people of all castes and religions, including Muslims. After initiation, the devotee is expected to adhere to the religious tenets of Eka Sarana. Though he himself married twice, had children and led the life of a householder, his disciple Madhavdev did not. Some of his followers today follow celibate life in the Vaishnavite monasteries, the Satras. The people who practice his religion are called variously as Mahapurusha, Saranya or Sankari. Literary works Sankardev produced a large body of work. Though there were others before him who wrote in the language of the common man, Madhav Kandali who translated the Ramayana into Assamese in the 14th century, his was the first Ramayana to be written in a modern Indian language, Harivara Vipra and Hema Saraswati, it was Sankardev who opened the floodgates and inspired others like Madhavdev to carry on where he left off. His language is lucid, his verses lilting, and he infused bhakti into everything he wrote. His magnum opus is his Kirtana Gosha, a work so popular that even today it is found in many household in Assam. It contains narrative verses glorifying Krishna meant for community singing. It is a bhakti keva par excellence, written in a lively and simple language, it has stories and songs for amusement for children, it delights the young with true poetic beauty and elderly people find here religious instruction and wisdom." For most of his works, he used the Assamese language of the period so the lay person could read and understand them. But for dramatic effect in his songs and dramas he used Brajavali, medieval mightily. Other literary works include the rendering of eight books of the Bhagavata Purana including the Adi Dasama Book X, Harishchandra Upakhyana his first work, Bhakti Pradip, the Nimi Navasada Samvada conversation between King Nimi and the Nine Siddhas, Bhakti Ratnakara Sanskrit verses, mostly from the Bhagavata, compiled into a book, Anadi Patana having as its theme the creation of the universe and allied cosmological matters, Gunamala and many plays like Rukmini Haran, Patni Prasad, Keli Gopal, Kurukshetra Yatra and Srirama Vijaya. There was thus a flowering of great bhakti literature during his long life of 120 years. <laughs> Poetic works Kavya. Kirtana Gosha Harishandra Upakhyana Rukmini Harana Ajamilapakhyana Bali Chalana Kurukshetra Yatra Gopi Uddhava Samvada Amrta Manthana Krishna Prayana Pandava Niriyana Kamariya Highlight Dia Bhakti theory Bhakati Pradipa Inadi Patana Nimi Nivasada Samvada Bhakti Ratnakara in Sanskrit Ganamala Topic transliteration Bhagavata Book V, 8, I, 2, 7, X, 11, 12, X, X, partial, 11, partial, and 12 Ramayana Uttarakhanda, supplemental to Madhav Kandali Satakanda Ramayana His translation of the Bhagavata is actually a transcreation, because he translates not just the words but the idiom and the physiognomy too. He has adapted the original text to the local land and people and most importantly for the purpose of bhakti. Portions of the original were left out or elaborated where appropriate. For example, he suppressed the portions that revile the lower castes of Sudra and Kaivartas, and extols them elsewhere. <laughs> Drama Ankhya Nat Sinha Yatra lost. Patni Prasada Janma Jatra lost. Kangsa Bada lost. Parijata Harana Kali Damana Rukmini Harana Keli Gopala Srirama Vijaya Sankardev was the fountainhead of the Ankhya Naat, a form of one act play. His Sina Yatra is regarded as one of the first open air theatrical performances in the world. Sina Yatra was probably a dance drama, and no text of that show is available today. 
Innovations like the presence of a sutradhara narrator on the stage, use of masks etc., were used later in the plays of Bertolt Brecht and other eminent playwrights. These cultural traditions still form an integral part of the heritage of the Assamese people. <laughs> Songs Borgit composed 240, but only 34 exist now. Batima Diva Batima, panegyrics to God Naat Batima, for use in dramas Raja Batima, panegyrics to King Nara Narayanth Borgits literally, great songs are devotional songs, set to music and sung in various raga styles. These styles are slightly different from either the Hindustani or the Carnatic styles. The songs themselves are written in the Brajavali language. Topic. Dance Satriya dance, that Sankardev first conceived and developed and which was later preserved for centuries by the Satras, is now among the classical dance forms of India. Although certain devout Sankarite calls this form as Sankari dance. Topic. Visual art Sapta Vaikuntha, part of the Sina Yatra production, does not exist today. Vrindavani Vastra, parts of this work are preserved in London. The famous Vrindavani Vastra, the cloth of Vrindavan, a 120 by 60 cubits tapestry depicted the lilas of Lord Krishna at Vrindavan through richly woven and embroidered designs on silk. A specimen, believed to be a part of this work, is at the Association pour l'étude et la documentation des textiles de sea collection at Paris INV, no. 3222. The Vastra, commissioned by Koch King Naranarayana, was woven by twelve master weavers in Barpata under the supervision of Sankardev over a period of six months and completed towards the end of 1554. This textile art depicted the life and deeds of Lord Krishna, who is worshipped in Eka Sarana Nama Dharma. The cloth was housed in the royal court of Kokbehar after the saint presented it to the king, but it disappeared at some point. It is believed that parts of this cloth made its way to Tibet and from there to its present place. <laughs> Notes <laughs>